Well, as Liz certainly knows, one of the big applause lines at CPAC during President Trump's speech was about, you guessed it, building the wall. He says they're going to start building it soon. We've already heard from our Will Carr that are, there are requests for proposals out in terms of exactly what this wall will look like and the cost to do it. He says that there is going to be a construction project beginning ahead of schedule. A big part of that wall, it's going to be some 1,600 miles long, goes along the border with the great state of Texas. And the governor of the great state of Texas, a friend of the show, joins us now. Governor Abbott, nice to see you, sir, from Washington. You, you too, Leland. It was great to see you in Houston. And now I'm here in D.C., and you're in, in Atlanta. You, you know, I, I'm, for some reason, I just don't think this is going to be as much fun for either of us than that uh, weekend at the Super Bowl. Uh, but we'll, we'll press on with the news as it were. This week, so much happened on the issue of immigration. We've heard Mr. Trump over and over talk about how already the enforcement is beginning. We're getting a bunch of quote unquote bad dudes, quote unquote, the hell out of this country, as the president said. And I'm wondering, are things really changing on the ground? Are folks in Texas, your citizens, really seeing a difference? Well, first, who, who would have thought that a president would actually live up uh, to what he campaigned on and what he promised during the campaign? And that's exactly what President Trump is doing. Second, we are seeing activities on the ground. Uh, during the Obama administration, we had great difficulties with immigration custom enforcement because the Obama administration will not allow them to do, to do their job. Now we are seeing uh, the empowerment of ICE, of Border Patrol, and they are now actually doing their job. And so those who are in the state uh, of Texas illegally and have committed crimes are now being uh, apprehended and uh, going through the deportation process. I'm hoping you can shed some light on this because so often we hear about sanctuary cities and the issue about whether or not it is local police's job or not to enforce immigration laws, whether or not local police are allowed to enforce immigration laws. Give us a sense of how it works in Texas because I know you've already started the work of trying to, at a state level, crack down on the practice of police not enforcing immigration laws. As governor of Texas, I have begun banning sanctuary cities, and then through the legislative process, we've uh, passed a law or a proposed law out of the Texas Senate going to the Texas House now. What I did as governor is I defunded Travis County, which is where the city of Austin is, because Travis County adopted some sanctuary city policies. Uh, I withdrew $1.5 million of funding from the governor's office to Travis County. On top of that, what the state of Texas is seeking to do is to make it so punishing for cities and counties that they simply cannot have sanctuary cities. What that includes is fines that, it, that could add up to about $9 million a year. It could also mean jail time for officials like the Travis County Sheriff, who is now promoting sanctuary city policies wow. that have real dangerous consequences for the people who live in Travis County. Well, uh, if, you, if your Texas Rangers start putting anybody in handcuffs, I know we'll be down there uh, to cover it. I want to get back to the politics of this, though. There's the issue of the law, and then there's the issue of the optics. And I'm wondering if at the RGA there's any discussion here about how to make sure you all stay on the right side of public opinion. Eighty percent of Americans say, hey, look, we support defunding sanctuary cities. We don't like sanctuary cities. On the other hand, the issues of quote unquote mass deportations, exactly how many people are going to get sent back, whether or not police arrest folks that they meet on traffic stops or through their everyday interactions that are not here legally, that's a little less decided. The public's pretty split on that. Have you, have you all discussed how to make sure you stay on the right side of optics on this? The Trump administration has been abundantly clear when Secretary Kelly came out this past week and said there will be no mass deportations. They're not looking to round up everyone. What they're looking to do is to enforce the rule of law, remembering that we are a nation of laws, and especially as it concerns law enforcement such as sheriffs, uh, either you have to enforce the law or you have to get out of the business of law enforcement. It's, it's very simple. And what Texans expect, uh, and what I think Americans ex expect, is for law enforcement officials to keep our community safe. You know, what Americans want most of all is to be yeah. safe and secure where they live. In Travis County, we have a sheriff who let out of jail about 50 people who were in the country illegally, who had committed crimes, who were behind bars for crimes such as allegations of 
uh, felonies, such as sexual assault of a woman, such as sexual assault of a minor, that were released back oh. out onto the streets. Americans and Texans want nothing to do with law enforcement officials who yes. make their communities more dangerous. Well, uh, Governor, it seems as though you, along with the Trump administration, are doing something about it. Uh, if, you, if, you, if anybody's going to go arrest that sheriff, you, uh, you let us know. We're going to want to cover that. I will be there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will. I have no doubt. Uh, Governor, great seeing you. We'll look forward to our next conversation. Hopefully, uh, fix up there somewhere sunny this time. It'll be fun. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Leland.